Let's have a go. Hello, hello everyone. Um, nice to see you again. Um, I'm <laughs> using the mirror to appear on to appear on camera, nice and easy, without having to move it very much. Um, thank you for thank you for watching. Uh, we're going to be starting a new one today. Um, and uh, yes, this one. I'll just move this out of the way again. This is the one I've been doing the last few weeks, last four four sessions, I think it is. And um, we've got a bit. I just did a little bit more on the the face on the right, and uh, I'll just sort of I'll take you further in, uh, give you a little look at the. Look at the features of the face. Is that that's that was what was um, bothering me about it last time? It was sort of too simplistic in a way. Um, and after a little bit of fiddling about with the pencil and a bit more paint around the edge, I sort of found a face in it that I I liked. That really was something quite different from the original drawing um, but it's um, it's got a kind of life of its own which is that was the original drawing if you remember uh, which was a very quick pencil sketch um, and in a way I wanted to, to retain a bit of life in this one um, and uh, when I'm satisfied with them that's when I that's when I like to sort of leave it. Um, the whole thing here is kind of there's there's some of the construction lines as you can see that um, you remember I drew those out initially and we'll be doing that again in a sec with the um, with the new picture. Um, but uh, they they help to um, and you've got a figure in a column. Um, or a piece of action in the column. Um, it's easier to get the get the gist of. But I will put that aside. Um, thank you for thank you for watching that one in previous sessions. Pop that on a little shelf. They they need to sit there for at least um, six months before before being varnished. I possibly won't varnish them really but um because these are the sort of these are the newest um uh newest pictures that they, they're a they're a sort of they write their own they write the rules for themselves as they go along and when i've got a set for them a set of them it's it's whether to whether to retain the the different textures in the in the paint or or not um, which will decide me whether to this make me decide whether to varnish it or not, um, because you can you can handle these pictures um, pretty much after a few days. It's just they won't they won't be totally dry. Now this is going to be the the new picture. Um, it's sort of drawing from Beeston train station, um, and I've got it's got a little. Um, canvas this. This is um, about A5 size I suppose, um, possibly slightly um, higher but it's um, on its side, it's horizontal. So we'll sort of um, do what we did before. My first, it's nice to be able to show you this from the, from the, the very start. Um, Excuse me, just have a sip of coffee. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, yes, we've got, I'll bring it sort of centralised because the, the painting, the uh, drawing rather, will be moving around. Um, now what I need to do is, uh, this is what I did before. There are there are lines on this. I'll I'll stick this. I've got a bit of tape on that. What I need to do is separate all these figures into kind of a, a 
column and I'll I'll actually use um, the pencil this time this is a this is a printout a photo taken and then printed out just on printer paper uh, of the drawing so that it um, so that the original drawing won't get too dirty or damaged and then you've got the you just got the option to be able to frame it at a later date it's not unknown for people to want to buy uh, the drawing um, now we've got lines there that the that the actual figures occupy um, their little sections and importantly as well the section where nothing is being occupied um, I need to know that um, to carry on now pretty much all those figures are on the same line that is very convenient um, so I'm just going to draw one across there last time I remember I, with the picture that I've just shown you from the previous few sessions um, I did this quite roughly with um, freehand drawn lines, but it is a, can be a bit better with a ruler. Now that is um, yeah, it's a sort of line across, it pretty much meets those feet as well. But those, there's two lines really, one, one slightly higher. But that will just give me the information I need. Now. This I want to I want to just make this a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna it might be easier to show you. Um, this is exactly what I'm seeing, so that's quite nice. Um, or I can actually do it within the camera lens. So it'll be precisely what you see. Now I, I can with this that's its original size, and then I'm moving it towards me to get the right sizing. And um, this size sometimes gets called site sizing. Um, it's a bit different to doing a grid system, although it looks sort of similar with all the lines. But now what I'm going to do is choose, I've just got to choose where that column of figures is going to end up, really. Um, they occupy, in the original drawing, about half of it. So... I think really keeping them down towards the bottom maybe give them a little bit extra down there and what I can do down there at the bottom underneath now what you can see is exactly what I can see so I'm going to mark off where the top of this and the bottom of this comes and um, just draw a line for my own convenience because you, you do need to take keep taking this away and putting it back just to check you're doing all right now there's two lines that the picture fits into the edges the side edges of the paper correspond to the edges of the board it's a piece of MDF board by the way which had been primed with acrylic paint I'm going to be painting in oils today but starting out in pencil now I need to keep putting the picture back there every time. Now then, first step is to mark off these construction lines, which is usually a little bit, it's usually the most precarious time. This this usually, uh, this is the stage of the picture that can I find to be the most um draining it's it's not it's because you you've just got nothing and you've got to create it from whole cloth and it can be quite you you really need a lot of energy to do it that's why I'd, that's why I do prefer starting in the morning with that first little first bit of coffee going around your system um your brain is waking up as you're doing it now all these lines are um, at right angles so I can just take my ruler thing um, I might use a
excuse me, I might use a um, set square just to um, so you can sort of see more easily, really. The transparent plastic. This is it's quite a mathematical stage, I suppose, or you could you could come to it and think, oh, it's it's technical drawing, isn't it? But it to to be able to measure where the figures are, it's always the same. It's the same principles in technical drawing or um, fine art. You want them in the right place and. Very, very basic um, ideas of area and space can really help you. And, and the nice thing is, it's not a, it's not anything like a architect's plan or something that's going to require absolute precision or even a technical drawing. It's, um, it's going to end up as a it's a sort of impression of what's there, so I don't need to worry too much about um, anything beyond the very basics of the measurement. So I'm going to be I'm going to be taking liberties with my own drawing, really. Now then, let's get this back in there. Um, you can see what you can see how I've drawn all those lines. I've drawn a few extra actually. Um, now. Inside inside that bit, there's no need for any lines to be there, but they might come in handy later as a kind of they sort of work as a as a bench really. And at and at Beeston Station, you've got this long these long green benches uh, that people sit on like that, um, and you can kind of plan out a structure for them to inhabit. And the if the structure's a bit more believable. Oh, excuse me, it's lovely coffee. <clears throat> now I'm gonna start with um it's uh, now taking marking points from these from these figures. Start with this one on the on the right hand side. Um what I will do now is I'll hold the pen or pencil um, just in front of it. I can see that head in this section anyway. To start this head, it, it occupies from about the halfway mark of the little chunk I've created. And it's really just a case of going through each piece that I've created and thinking, right, where is the where's the halfway mark or the quarter mark? Let's check I've got some lead in there. And um, a very basic kind of breaking it down into which parts the figure occupies. Now that that bit is the bit that just that head, just that head occupies from about halfway there. And you can use a combination of um, judgment as I used whilst drawing it. Um, if I'm holding it right next to it. Um, I've got I've made myself a little box so I know where not to deviate from. So it's a question of um doing doing the drawing within within a set area. So I I know I can't go too too far wrong. And this is this is a basic this is a guide for me. And I and it and it's changeable, um, which is what what I need or at all times with the picture. It, it it can't really be if I put one thing down, it might lead me on to the next mark or the next idea of how to treat that area. But I'm not really going to be. Not necessarily going to be sticking with it. I want the freedom to be able to move it around or to change it or obliterate it. It can kind of be a template for one part. Okay. 
can it's it's nice having that the the previous picture to um compare with the process of doing this um i think it's it's a good idea to have a smaller one because i can actually scale things down and um show show you exactly what i'm doing with this process last time i kind of um did it quite quickly it was still it was still a good guide for me but um this is at this size i'm able to show you it in pretty discernible detail and you can actually see the the textures hopefully now that is relatively speaking where those where those parts are it's a sort of short swearing person i think now then i need that folded down to the next the next section um i'm gonna that little column in the middle that gets left out and this person just to shake my arm because it does gets a bit cramped when you're holding it up to a picture like this that's possibly why it's more physically demanding now these um i'll just hold up the picture i did again because this is um that's the kind of um, freedom I want for uh, these marks. I want to allow these marks a bit of freedom. Um, I need to know where and when to stop. Um, but these construction lines can be obliterated partially or um, totally. Um, does depend. I think it's more more appropriate to keep the construction lines for an area where that's been designed by humans, where a straight edge has been used. You can um, get a sense of the organic things inhabiting a structure the non-organic area right. now then, this figure needs to be right and bring him out that far I think it's a he this figure I think I, I can't decide whether that's a man or a woman actually um, now this this head again in this little section it's often the head that starts things off um, I can I can take it's it starts at its leftmost edge in the center of that tr of that uh, little segment so I can sort of estimate with that um, I've got my little finger rested on the board here as a kind of um mild stick thing so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna actually employ the real the real thing and that that will be a bit yes there we go I've got the leaning stick which uh, has a little a little hook on and it hooks onto the top yes I've got that idea from I, I was using the stick with a cork on the end but then I saw an, an artist called Tim Fisher using that method with an L hook so I give, I'll give him credit for that. I saw him using that at Patchings Art Festival. Now I can estimate, uh, oh, I just need to bring that forward a little bit. Um, actually, I think I'll employ another. No, it won't really help. I'm just going to employ my shorter mile stick, but it's uh, not really long enough. Um, right. Let's get that in the right place and uh, carry on kind of half estimating, but I've, I've limited my limited the area of where this head can be possibly be. Uh, so he is just sitting in this area and that is that's pretty much 
the the space's head occupies. Um, down to that, that bottom of the uh, other section um, whoop. and uh, yes is thigh kind of takes a darker area that edge of leg and I can imagine um, yes if we if I just uh, increase that line down to where it Falls down. You can see that that's the line that I've just drawn there, and it's um, about a quarter of the way in for that foot. That foot occupies about a quarter of this area. So you got basically you're sort of chopping areas into halves and quarters or thirds. It's really not. Once you get used to doing that, you can chop um, chop images in front of your eyes up. Um, to suit your needs if you want to sort of pick them apart the trick is don't take the whole process um, as something you have to sort of get done all at once there are several stages of this and it makes sense to take Take them slowly, one at a time. And you, if you if you were to take the whole job on at once, painting and drawing, and right, we're going to get the drawing done, we get the painting done. It's it's too much for me anyway. Uh, and you can have a you can actually <laughs> you can actually enjoy it um, when you you know you're making the right decisions because you've done the. You've got the drawing done to your satisfaction. You know everything's in the right place, so you don't need to be fretting about the basics. Now that um, gets that figure into pretty much right area. Onto the, onto the. I think it's a lady in sunglasses. Her head is pretty much just off to the. It starts in the centre, but it kind of takes up a one third, but just nudged over to the left. I think. Um, and she goes down further into the second section as well but her sunglasses I think will just come at that line there but they represent in this quick drawing I'm doing just a, a kind of dark a dark area and it's sort of a, need a bit more pencil out a darkish darkish area going down And that really is a seat in the background. And I kind of fill it in dark just so I remember to have that there later. Um, now that is probably enough information that I need to be going on with with them. Um, and I'm just going to fold over again. We've got a big section of non-inhabitants. Um, and then we fold that over and there's the last two figures occupying these bits and they look a bit they from my memory of the drawing they're sort of like they look like sort of two young two young blokes possibly in sort of like skate skateboard style dress <laughs> uh, got a hat on anyway um and very 
a, a relaxed uh, relaxed posture there so but they they may change as we go on um i should just have a little sip of water and a, and a look at what i've drawn oh now then um let's pull this slightly further out that thin ones yes you sort of got two segments i'm going to move this over and lean on this let's make life easier right i've got my finger on the board again that head pretty much occupies a th third of that little segment it's the same same process each time let's start with a segment and then what is being occupied in that in that rectangle that you've created and come on, you can do this you could actually if you weren't as um if you weren't wanting to do it by eye like I'm doing, I'm, I'm kind of doing it by eye within the sections I've created. But you could actually draw new lines and split these inner sections up into areas, into the areas that um, the head occupies. So you could actually have lines occupying the third. Makes things a bit complicated line wise. You get a lot of lines flying about, but. That you've got to sort of remember what that what does that line relate to uh, but it's with a smaller area you can hope to make the judgment and get it pretty much right because this is all subject to change but it's surprising how small a mark can describe a section or not um, when you need when you need a leg in the right position it's, if it's not in the right position a person who has who has seen somebody walking will know they'll they'll see that and it's they'll just think oh, that's in the wrong position it's too far back it's, it's too small now we're going into that this leg occupies this little X sub column, side column. That line, that line I drew because it represented the the outermost edge of what the figure occupies. Um, now we have. Uh, I think that might be enough. Oh, I'll just put a little marking for. Here's a beard shaded area underneath because it describes the head. Also that hat thing. Dark hair, whatever. <laughs> Gives him a head. Right. Uh, I've got lead in that still. Right. Um, and last figure. Fold this over again. Same process. Um, just folded that. Um, Folded that over from the from the previous one. It's a bit like consequences. The party game where you fold fold the paper over. And this is by no means the only method for uh, making making drawings. It's the one I have kind of I found this is the most useful for me. Now let's just mark the middle of that because we can mark the middle, the real middle of the actual drawing, and limit limit the options down again. That head is pretty much occupying one third in the centre of that section. So if we can think quickly about halves and quarters and thirds, we suddenly have a head occupying that section in the right place surprising how little an area small an area it um actually occupies and to do its describing now i can look at these dark areas quite quick and the more drawing you do 
in a sketchbook, the, the better you get at judging these angles um, and the spaces in between. Now that head is pretty much like that and I need a head's worth. I think you can see within there you've got a head and then you've got another head going to the arm. Head's worth. So that is the arm. Just something to give me a clue of, of where to put the paint in a second. I'm going to be daubing on the, the white paint again. Now that uh, line of the knee comes down and pretty much starts on the halfway mark that I made before so that I can sort of reuse and take that down but guessing where the halfway point is or the quarter quarter point um, it's something that you can you can pretty much rely on your intuition it's just a I mean this is a small canvas but I small board or canvas but it's it's about being able to stand back from something and you could repeat this process large on a sort of ten, it could be 10 foot by four foot wall or something and it would still be the same principle a bit of a foot is that in the right place i don't think that's in the right place i sort of i judged that wrong way so rubber, rubber is a very useful tool. Um, now let's let's have a look at that leg. If we can actually draw a line over there, that is where it's pretty much meant to come. Ooh, all the way back, <laughs> it's changed perspective. Um, now when I've um, described this method in in classes it's a bit difficult to get the hang of it's it's only really it's it's quite useful when you're uh when you've all you've got is a little drawing and you want to make it a little bit bigger um and you don't want to have to make a drawing the same size as uh the image you want it to be in the end um but I could, I mean, with something as relatively small as this, I could have printed out a slightly larger one. But it's um, this is this is how I always tend to do things because I, I like the, just having this is the actual size of the sketch, and uses less paper and ink, and it uh, keeps <laughs> keeps these skills um, in practice that I've I've got. Now I think that foot that darker foot is actually behind the leg there um and we have just hand, 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 hand i think that will that will do for all the figures um that is now going to be the reference just move the mile stick there. now that um i will put to the left and just move the camera slightly so that you can see the paint and what I'm looking at because I'm just about to um, just about to start in with a bit of paint to give these figures a bit of body and this is this, exactly the same process as last time or well, the first painting I did in a live session um, several weeks ago now um, let's just I'm gonna because the figures are so small I've got um, the rigger brush quite a um, thin thin end to this and I can um, pick out the figures quite nicely just for my convenience I'm gonna start on the left so that I don't need to keep uh, dink, dunk in my hand over the top, but I do have the stick, which is, which means I can flit about. Sometimes it's quite nice to do all the heads. Right, just gonna get my 
flip between these methods it's maybe that I've got to adjust my hand movements sometimes takes a second I was worried last week with her and the week before when I was moving the camera about it kept tilting around so I thought I'll, I'll take it back to standing <laughs> standing and painting and the camera's not being shifted about and these items uh, I will I will leave this painting until the next demonstration I do so uh, this oil paint that I'm using will have dried to a touch dry state so I'll be able to put more paint over the top of it at that point I've sometimes used um, acrylic um, texture paste in place of this method um, and that will dry faster But it does give you a different look. I'm still drawing. I'm taking. I'm not just filling in what I've drawn. I'm looking at, looking at this the reference material here and trying to apply the paint in appropriate ways, in the right direction for what I'm, what I'm trying to represent. And also thinking, how thick can this paint go down? And where are the interesting chunky pencil marks that I can I can make use of with with a sort of translation of the paint? Just keep having a, a good look. That's really quite a small one, and it's um the the rigger. Even though I, I'm afraid I don't. My 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 brushes have had some use, and I've allowed them to go a bit uh, splayed out. I'm afraid. Um, they're still they're still very. Still very useful, um, but I'm sure I don't keep my brushes in the state that some people do. But I'm very careful with them. Now that is a kind of broad, broader strokes, broadest strokes. Um, those legs are they're a little bit I think that on the left is slightly wrong. Um he's the one on the right's alright, but I think what I've done is gone over to the right on that one. So I'm just gonna try um and obliterate that and kind of redraw it. Nice thing with the oil paint, you can kind of rub it away, still get the pencil mark underneath. And when you reapply, you now have that too as a guide. I think it's just down over that way, so he's, he's got legs further apart. This is the that's the process of drawing. You get you're allowed to get things wrong and you can change them. It's not it's it's a fighting through the situation and finding the way to do it. Not it, it it's not necessarily I don't like thinking of it as a kind of 
um, super performance of skills. That implies that the content of the picture is subordinate to the skills. Um, I don't. I don't like that idea. I, I. I want the actual painting to have a quiet quietness to it. So it. It sort of. It takes as long as it takes. And I also don't really like. I, and do them when it's a very, very um, fast demonstration. Um, I'll sort of, uh, it's, it's difficult to, uh, well, I have to explain to the audience, it's, um, I'm not going to finish today, <laughs> I'm afraid, it's, there are, there are, some people who would be able to finish or would have planned every move out. But I I feel like it takes the creativity away from me. And I need to retain some spontaneity. The freedom for me to... I, I don't want to be feeling that I have to do anything within the painting. And for that reason, this this painting is is another one of my paintings. Um, that one I showed you just now, with the, and that I've been doing in the previous weeks. That will be going on the website um, in the next day or so. Um, OliverLovely dot com. And now it's um, HTTPS, um, so even more secure. Even though there are, there isn't a shop or anything on it. Um, but it is actually it's back to normal now in the I think it's propagating through the search engines. Yes, there was a little bit of uh of a delay when it was upgraded. Now these I'm trying to leave interesting chunks and maybe bigger lumps of paint to dry at this stage I can um, think what will what will be nice for me later to utilize as texture now these I want, I want a little bit extra here because this will all be dry next next time um, can actually rub some of it away with sandpaper when it's partially dry, but um, just to make it more interesting for something, something for the next uh, layers of paint to um, cling to, and these these chunks are causing the more you put down, the more you've got sort of shadows for things, and you can actually sort of think like a it's a very very thin relief bass relief um, you think like a sculptor and find a way to make a sort of a three three dimensional image with three dimensional image without actually um, without it being three dimensional and for that reason you it's nice to be able to see the 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 real original painting um, that's that's the element that you don't get often in a photograph right and lastly we'll go for this uh, this figure on the right which is the first one I drew I think it might be a woman looking at those glasses. The memory of drawing this is coming back to me, but 
all of these, of course, get drawn just before a train arrives and just before my train arrives. So I've got sort of five minutes to get these figures done before the train blocks my view. You do get a good warning. You've got sort of like, is the train now approaching platform on? And then that means, right, speed up, get that, get that leg drawn, get that in. And then, but the, when the people hear that, they often start getting ready as well. So. If they move, sometimes it's nice to, well, it's it's essential really to flip to another figure and just, you can be like Dr. Frankenstein and mush a figure up into, from from several sources. Now, if I thought, um, if I was thinking, just fill these lines in, then um, it would be just, I would probably be creating a, it's the same texture all the way over, and that's just not going to be as interesting as trying to get some extra texture out of this. And it's really quite small, sort of closing closing stages or maybe slightly closer to this. Let me see a bit more detail. I like a bit more interest on these two figures on the, on the left. So I'll just fold this round. Stick it down to the board. And this drawing, this drawing will be sort of an essential reference tool. I, I just won't know what move to make next without it as the painting develops. We've got sort of beard, beardy bit there, which uh, it's it's the the pencil marks are moving in in that direction. So I've got to kind of notice that and move the brush in that way too. And the arm over the top is still quite, it's a rough one in paint, but it can help to describe that a little bit better. I've got a kind of shoulder area. I think that is going down a bit too far, actually. With this figure, this particular figure, it's a funny sort of position. I think his arm actually comes down just above that box I've drawn. So let's bring that round, and that is actually more of the waist and the bottom and the thigh. Here with that for that figure. This figure's got more of a more of an arm arm here, so I'd, I'd like to. That sort of makes the makes the position gives you an idea of what the figure might be thinking, or trying to make everyone else around them think about them. You can start to get to know them a bit and think, well, well how are we going to, how is that figure going to be best put together? It's looking down. Looking down, presumably at a phone. Um, this figure is looking sort of to the left there. I'm 
don't have a problem with the main elements there. Because when you'd, you'd sort of stand back or look back over the lot and think, oh, that's, that's a funny, something funny about it, and it's, it doesn't correspond to the to the drawing. Um, sort of, that's just like spot the difference. <laughs> and as you move through building the figure, you've got certain this this uh this figure anyway it sort of looks like it's the original one but it's sort of been covered in covered in a sheet so if you can represent the the main elements then you're you're making a good it's the it's a good start for the thing I'll take a take a look at the whole lot again these these are sort of the they will these chunky bits will dry um, into into next week um, and they will well they will be touch dry anyway and I'll be able to allow paint to sort of fall over them so before I finish today um, I'll think in terms of that and try and get a few few more chunky bits in um, and I'm actually going to switch over to a different sort of texture because that that brush texture is lovely and I don't want to kill it um, where I, I want it to stay exactly like that and I don't want to sort of be going over it time and again. So I'm going to switch over just to a little mini palette knife thing. Um, well, palette knife, not palette knife thing. And you can kind of lay paint on top of where you've got, where you've got the brush strokes. And it does have a different, you can do things with this that you couldn't do with a brush and vice versa. Um, that is a i would say for i would say for that figure that head and i suppose that the the cross position of the legs is the most interesting um thing that draws draws me into look at the figure so and that leg is foremost so i'm going to try and create a kind of three-dimensional leg over the top of this one. And these ideas, I, I don't plan these ideas out. It's a kind of um, memory of the drawing and an idea of, well, ideas that come to me as I've been doing the others and they wouldn't come if I hadn't actually started this this painting, it's, it's it's very exciting in that way. Painting, I find, you can have a, a an adventure. Oh, I will be able to in subsequent. demonstrations I think that's the right word um, yeah, the ones after that I'll be able to put more layers of paint on this on top of the dry on top of the dry paint and build it up if I want to well, I hope you can see the way the, where the light is catching on the different areas and that can be the equivalent of a pencil line where you've got a shadow and anywhere that 
might be more interesting for these these figures. I think this person's face might benefit from just a little bit of texture like that. You can sort of use these helmet knives to scrape down as well. Scrape bits of paint away. And the nice thing about the oils is it the oils will stay um the oil paint will stay wet for you for a couple of days and you can move it around it'll dry in different in different rates the thicker it is it will take longer to be to set or to get hard okay it's um Just making sure I've got uh, all of the main main details. And also, it's the very the sort of technical side is different marks next to each other, different types of mark give you visual interest and when you know that you can if you can vary them as much as you can or a, quite a, if you can vary them appropriately then you'll be creating this um, something that mimics reality but it's it's the way you have seen the reality and sort of taking a photograph with your mind's eye or I think those feet are just slightly too high. Paint all over myself. I'm just going to make, make a mark to cut them off I think it's in relation to um, that there's the angle between the two feet yeah I think I've got it right there um, I want to these, these figures probably won't end up having too much of a face but um, I can imagine them. This is another painting uh, with faces that, with a face that was a similar. This is on the website. Um, face of a similar size. Probably they'll end up like that, or like, like that one. But uh, it's sort of a starting point for me to think. Well, that's um, that's that's an option we could take, but. If I'm, I'm, I'm never, I'm never limited. I don't, I don't have to give myself those limits. So it's, uh, whatever, whatever texture and atmosphere is appropriate for this, and I can think like, well, what, what type of temperature is it in the station, and then start to think, well, what colours are appropriate to that? Um, and this is kind of a textural underpinning. That will that will not be. I'll decide now. The this texture is not going to be used anywhere else. I'll have to come up with something else, or the the direction of the brush strokes will be different. The figures are kind of a maelstrom of marks that swirl around, a bit like smoke. Everything else. In the background to explain that it's not figure will have to be different and and it the reality reflects that actual reality there's something going on here and there's not anything going on in that part on the wall um, so really you can then 
talk about it like as if it's words really now that is that seems like a nice place to leave it for this week i'm gonna have to control myself and not do any more on this that's what i've been having to do because of the next stage i um it helps that it's actually oil paint um i'll just bring the mirror in and i'll appear on I'll appear on camera again um yes it helps that it's oil paint and uh, it's not um and I need it, I need it to uh, be um, set to carry on. So um, that will, I've got, I've got several other pictures on the go anyway. So um, that will be nice to, I'll let them, let them cook on the side. And um, But uh, thank you very much for watching. And um, yes, we'll be back uh, next week with, an, with another possibly sort of, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, I'm not sure which, but I'll put an event on again. Um, yes, thank you very much and uh, have a good day and have a good weekend. Bye-bye.